All right, well, we're starting, and welcome back to the podcast. Today, we are here with Hugo Pierre Martin, the voice of Chamber and Valorant. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. It is, it is always a good day to talk to a new Valorant voice actor, or any Valorant voice actor in general, but you are... Um, you were a very difficult one to, like I said, to even find. So now that we're doing this, I I am so happy. And I know a lot of people, you are very requested in my comments of where's Chamber? When's Chamber coming? <laughs> and now we got it. And I'm not sure, have you done anything uh, when it comes to like interviews for Valorant at all? I did one with Carolina. Oh. Casa. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's, it's really funny. It wasn't through... Uh, Valorant community. I didn't know her, um, and I was talking to another friend in the video game community, um, who's w worked on a game with Carolina, and I was just asking her for advice, just sort of like, just general voice actor stuff. And she's mm -hmm. like, "Oh, let me ho let me hook you up with a friend." And I was like, "Okay, cool." And then she she told me who it was, and I was like, "Oh yeah, I'm in a game with her," or you know, mm -hmm. we, we voice in the same game. And so I talked on the phone with Carolina, who's who's really 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 sweet. And then yes. she asked me to be on her her podcast, so I did her her Twitch podcast or whatever it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah so it's it's really interesting. I, I want to know a little bit more about. Um, we'll kind of go through uh, all the stages of of getting uh, cast with Valorant, but can you start with the beginning of how this came to fruition of of that first um, kind of when you first saw valorant and how that happened when i first got the audition yes. request and stuff like that um my memory isn't very good and i think <laughs> as i mentioned before i i tend to delete emails um <laughs> but obviously they aren't they don't tell you what it is what mm -hmm. game it is and um there's a little bit of, there's a description of the character and i think that they gave like you know some kind of parameters of what they're looking for um one of the references was, I do remember was, I forget the character name, but you know, in the Matrix, did you see the second or third Matrix? There's the French guy. Mm. Did you ever see that? Yeah, there's a, there's a French character in the Matrix. So that was one of the references. And I was like, okay, gotcha. I, I can I can definitely do something like that, um, which is a, a French guy, which has a, a pretty distinct French accent, but is also kind of hamming it up a little bit. It's kind of like leaning into their French accent and also is very romantic and stuff like that. So. That was the reference. And um, yeah, so it was just initial audition. And then they did like an in-person callback in studio. Um, by then, I think it was COVID. And um, yeah, pretty extensive, long callback. Usually callbacks or anything like that. It's, you know, it's, but it was, it was pretty long. Um, so it was kind of one of those things where it was just like, okay, well, if I didn't get this, <laughs> it's sort of like, that was a long that was a long recording callback audition mm -hmm. uh but f then i heard back um a bit after and um ex aside from the en from the engineers which are there everything was remote mm -hmm. um and yeah and then we got started so were you originally did you start like before covid happened and then kind of go was that like was there like an overlap or was it just That's all covid that's what I can't really quite remember. I, I think it might have been, yeah, I can't remember. Mm. It was somewhere around there. The initial audition might have been like right before. Sometimes you don't hear back. Sometimes, I mean, the industry is really strange because sometimes you hear like the next day and sometimes you like forget about it and it's like four months later. So I, I can't really quite recall. Mm -hmm. And But all the recording was, yeah. When it, when it comes to like finding that voice for the character, was there... Was there a lot of kind of searching for that? Or did you kind of have, if you can remember, did you have that right away? No, we, um, I think, I think the voice, the attitude, basically, which were there are a lot of playful lines, a lot of lines that are like, you know, teasing the other characters. Mm -hmm. And he's very full of himself. <laughs> so that was all, that was all like, okay, got it. Um, but the accent was something that we went back and forth. And I think the most interesting thing, which I think it's a compliment to Riot and everything like that, is that we recorded maybe one or two sessions. And then they were like, at the end of the session, they were like, could you push the French, French accent really, really far? 
Mm -hmm. And I did that, and then they were like, oh, I think that's what we want. And then so it went from me at first doing a pre like a relatively thick accent and then working with the director and him going, I think we want to dial it back for comprehension. And I was like, okay. And then Riot was like, we want to dial it way forward. But then after when we started recording again, I didn't push it that forward. I think they, they, I, I could get they wanted a little bit more. So, I mean, honestly, it didn't really like change that much, but the, the, the main thing you'll hear, which I'll maybe change it a little bit, and I, I, I feel it's justified, is that with like the French word that, you know, for French people, it's very hard to say that, that, that. they don't have that in the language so much. So they say that, that, or they'll, if they're really French, they'll say that, <laughs> the Z. So it started with like, yeah, just taking out the zats, but then they pushed it. So, but I think it's very fair since I've been an observer of hundreds of French accents in my family that some French people will, you know, when they're not concentrating, they'll say zat. And then when they're concentrating a little more, they'll say dat. Um, and I think rarely say dat. Um, so, but that's literally like the sound that makes it like more French and less French. Mm -hmm. um, there's probably some words here and there, but, but yeah, aside from that, that was just, but it was, it was still, it was really cool because you, I didn't mind at all. I was like, oh, cool. We're going to go back and do a whole day of recording again, just because we want to get it, get it right. So, yeah. Uh, where, where were you born at? San Francisco. Okay. And so where like being a voice actor, do you advertise that you can do French and where does that like you said you you observe in your family so as your family's french yeah my mom is french my dad's american so i grew up speaking both my dad speaks french too so we in our household we would speak like a mix of french and english mm. but, um i would speak french at home with my family my brothers and sisters sort of a mix obviously at school i didn't go to a french american school but then we'd go to take summers in france and so as soon as I land in France, I just speak French only. Mm. Um, so yeah, so I developed, but but um, you know, it's it's my I'm not fully French, and I wasn't really fully educated in French, so sometimes my grammar kind of sucks. But <laughs> typically, typically my accent is pretty. When I'm concentrated, is pretty good. Where I go to France, and French people don't know that I'm not French. It's usually I'll say something kind of odd, and I'll have to be like, oh, by the way, I'm. I'm not a rube. I'm just, I just wasn't educated in France. Um, yeah. But yeah, but be because of the work of a voice actor, I pretty much, you know, I, I developed it. I, I did, my first voiceover was in French mm. um, for Xbox. I did a French, French Xbox commercial <laughs> that I booked, that I booked on Craigslist. Wow. Yeah. Xbox was advertising on Craigslist? Yeah, I mean, let's not put it out there, internet. <laughs> <laughs> Xbox wasn't this, this casting. This is such oh. a long time. Ago. Not Xbox's fault. It, it, this casting director in San Francisco couldn't find uh, a French actor because sometimes they'll like localize. They'll be like, we want to record all the languages in one studio, mm -hmm. and so they'll just try to find it locally. It was it was before the days of like Source Connect and all the remote stuff. So they were just looking around San Francisco for a French actor, and they couldn't find one. And so they, I looked on Craigslist when I was a young actor, and. Um, and got that gig, yeah. So I've 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 done work in that's broadcast in France. Um, so I, I realized then that I was like, okay, yeah, I, I they can't tell. I mean, they even interviewed me like they can't tell that I'm not French. <laughs> that I'm not full French. Mm -hmm. So, so I can pass pretty well. But but you know, if 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 I got to speaking like a, a lot a lot, probably some of the accent would like slip a little bit, basically. But for the purposes of work. I've also worked on screen in, in French for, for directors and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. it seems to work out. Yeah. Is, do you, do you enjoy one more than the other when it comes to voiceover or on screen work? On screen work. Oh, you do? Yeah. I mean, I think voiceover is a lot easier. I, I, I mean, for me, I, I think for a lot of people, some people are like, oh, voiceover is a lot harder. I think it's probably just on screen work is more challenging for me. Um, voiceover i find really pleasurable but but that's it's but it's also because i haven't like experienced the full gamut i just did a little animation like a year and a half ago and i don't know if it'll ever come out but i did find animation especially like doing voiceover with an animatic they'll have like a rough drawing if you mm -hmm. know what that is 
And I, I found that challenging. That's because I'd never done it before. But like mm -hmm. commercials, I've done hundreds of commercials. And so I, it, I, it's something I feel like I'm a professional in. And now with voice with video games, that's a little more challenging because I'm a little less a, a challenged by it. But I've done I've done a number of hours. I, I worked for years in some games and stuff like that. So I kind of know how it goes. Mm -hmm. uh, so I feel pretty comfortable in video games. Um, but on camera is something that I never really had the I, I did a lot of on camera work, but mostly like independent and student films and stuff like that. So I've only had a few opportunities, a handful of opportunities of working with like big tv and film things mm -hmm. so i just i just haven't had the hours so and it's it's a very when you're in a voiceover booth it's like they're just they're usually very positive and they're just like you're doing great you're great you know they're very positive that's how it is and and on a film set when you're a co-star or, or a guest star you know those terms you're just you have to go and you have to execute and no one is there to like make you feel like you're a special special snowflake you know they just mm -hmm. you have you have to execute so it's it's really stressful and hard so I, I just I'm dying for more experience in that to be able to get better at that. So I think I prefer on camera because I find more challenge in it is really the real answer. Yeah, it's always very interesting to me to because a lot of voice actors or even in Valorant, a lot of them also do screen or on screen mm -hmm. work and stuff like yeah. that. And so I just I just never know which one people enjoy more, like mm -hmm. what their plans for the future are, because mm -hmm as we or as i talk to these people i build connections and they become some of my favorite people and i'm rooting for them wholeheartedly so right yeah it, it's really cool to to see where they want to be and progress in their future mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um but when like do you do you feel like with like these video games and stuff is it is it challenging to act out a scene when you don't necessarily have um the visual representation at all is that is that difficult in any way yeah that that can be a little bit of um of a hiccup sometimes and usually the director is like outlining what's happening ahead of time mm -hmm. and then sometimes you do a take and they're like um no they're two feet away <laughs> you know it's a lot of times it's like technically like they're two feet away and also remember there was just an explosion and so like, <laughs> okay okay gotcha so there's sometimes it's stuff like that um that makes it, but yeah it is it is a little a little challenging sometimes uh yeah i just think like when because it's a lot of creativity in your own mind you kind of have to set the scene in your own head mm -hmm. and kind of especially if you're doing it alone you really don't because on on screen you you can feed off you know mm -hmm. if you're you know riffing or you know whatever the case may be you got that yeah. other person in the room mm -hmm. and with voiceover i'm sure there's some times in in certain specific scenarios where you're in another room or you know have the other performance but a lot of these lines you're doing just alone and yeah and if you're coming into a game like valorant it's not necessarily the easiest concept to understand so like True. uh a lot of scenarios i'm sure a lot of these voice actors don't really know exactly what the mood is or something like mm -hmm. that so I, I understand that could probably be pretty challenging yeah yeah, it, it's um, you just have to kind of trust. I mean, I, I think with with especially these big video games, it's like they want to get it right. And if they do a whole session and don't get it right, they're going to call you back and you're just going to do it again. Mm -hmm. So I think the lesson you learn as a voice actor is just to relax and to trust them and let them collaborate with you and let them just push you a little bit more. I think that on camera acting, for example, it's not only the stimulus of like getting stuff, but you're kind of more in, usually more in charge of your performance. Like you, you have to do your work and you also get the script ahead of time. And so like a voiceover, you get them like right there as you're about to say it. So you have to just like, okay, got it. Um, so you kind of need to depend on the director mm -hmm. and all the input basically to, to just, and just be flexible and not, not have too much of an ego about it and be like, oh, okay, you want to be like that? Oh, okay, sure, yeah, that's, you know, even if you didn't necessarily see it that way, Mm -hmm. you're like you're like you just have to be flexible and just just let them shape you a little bit basically and just trust them and let them maybe maybe they're doing they're making a mistake and that's sort of a lesson with with creative people is 
let let each other if you think it's the other person's not right or wrong which obviously it's different choices like just don't have an ego with it and collaborate and let them make a choice basically because probably they're allowing you to make a choice and mm -hmm. definitely with valorant it was you had to move fast and get through a lot of stuff but they're really nice and i i totally think i could have gone hey i have an idea i never like inserted any lines um but I know that I could have been like, hey, could I do a take like this? I, I don't know if I did that, but I, I really got the sense that I could do that and it was collaborative and they would be like, yeah, sure, why not? It was, it was very free and loose. And it's not always like that. Sometimes they just kind of want to get through it mm -hmm. and, you get, and you get a sense that you're like, right, I'm here to just execute and they're, they're a little tired. They don't want my <laughs> input on, 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 on a world they've been building for like three years and you're like, I think this should be like this. And you're like, okay, yeah. Yeah. A little bit of that. Yeah, it's, I always ask the, ask a voice actor, like, how much of your character um, were you able to, like, give your own interpretation? Like, were you showing what you interpreted from, from this description, or were you told just to do this kind of kind of what they had like did, did you show them what they wanted or mm -hmm. if that makes sense yeah i i think so i think so i think that i think the description of the audition the breakdown was was what what i what i did and then the, and then there's just like a level of trust of like cool we liked your audition you know sometimes you, when you start <laughs> recording they're like here was your audition <laughs> just to remember what you did and you're like cool Mm -hmm. And then you just get started. Yeah, it, it's pretty quick. I mean, that's that's the the gift of the audition process is they're picking you because you're giving them already what they want. Yeah, they don't they don't have to go very far. So so yeah, it was it was pretty much that smooth, you know. Um, yeah, it was it was it was it didn't change much from audition to execution. Mm -hmm. um, and I really think what was fun is I I never really thought about like obviously it's it's in lines here and there. Sometimes there was like longer speeches which I'm not sure if they've ever appeared or not, or if they're Easter eggs or if they're just extra stuff. But, um, you know, it wasn't too much. You know, this kind of game, it wasn't thinking about, like, the psychology of Chamber, you know, or anything like that. It was just, it was just like, okay, he's, he's, uh, he's got, can have an intense side, but he, it's obviously very playful. I mean, it's kind of fun because I think he had a lot of freedom because he's pretty silly sometimes and, you know, makes a lot of jokes and, mm -hmm. and um and they really allowed me they never went like oh you're going too high in your voice or too low in your voice i just was just like i have complete freedom because what what the mistake you make as as an actor is is defining a character with more constraint than you yourself so like i mean not to get all like actor teachy or coachy or whatever but i can kind of give you an, a separate example which mm -hmm. acting teachers have given me is that when you're starting as an acting basically like you do a scene and you your voice ends up like limiting to a range your emotions can limit too and you realize if you're just like talking with your friends like it goes all over the place and there's little bounces you know what i mean like you're more you have more range sometimes and then you start acting as a character and the character has less range and so you do have to first limit like who the character is or whatever but then you should just just be free just like people are free and loose and imperfect and they, they have like, oh, so it's not like, oh, that didn't sound like chamber there. It's like, no, it's a three dimensional. Let's make it a three dimensional person. At least that's why I felt with it. And that's how I approach things. If it's not a commercial or whatever, it's like, let's make it a three dimensional person. So, you know, it's always their choice to not use a certain line reading or whatever. But it's like, maybe I'm in the mood to go really high or, or go down here, you know, so it's it, there's a, a sense of like, just stop thinking so much and just be free and let it let it loose. Mm -hmm. yeah it's 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 just crazy like the whole the whole fear of like valorant when did you realize like was there a moment where it kind of hit you how big everything was and how impactful like the character that you you know made come to life was there a moment where you realized that this is pretty big uh I don't, I don't think there was a moment, but I think that um, after the trailer came out, I was like, oh, wow, it's really cool, really impressive animation, and like people liked it and stuff. But I think probably just like looking at the art, the fan art, mm. and I would like, 
I would, I'll be like, oh, look at this fan art. That's amazing. And then I'd look like a couple weeks later and be like, wow, there's like 20 more. <laughs> and I'd be like, that's amazing. That's so fun. And then, you, yeah, it just kept going. Um, and it's still to this day, it keeps going. And I have fun every once in a while looking up and I'm like, oh, there's a new one. I'm like, wow. And I've, I've followed a few uh, young fan artists. I even commissioned somebody to make me a piece of art that I could send out as a card for business purposes and stuff like that. So that's, that's the part where I'm like, wow, like this community is, they obviously love the game and then they create all this like fan culture mm -hmm. around it. And they're like, I, I definitely have never, I don't know video game world very much, but when I started doing video games, I started like looking into them a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I, I just, I know that exists with other games, but obviously I hadn't encountered it. Um, yes. Like, yeah, I, I wasn't a main character. I did a lot of voices for Days Gone. Mm -hmm. like I'm, all, I'm all over that game, just people getting killed and random small characters. I don't really know where I'm at because I don't, I don't have a game. To get to the, I just know I'm all over the place. But so obviously after that came out, like I would look things up. But I, I just, you know, I didn't see the same amount, basically. No diss to Days Gone because it's a different game, you know. Yeah. You have like all these characters and stuff like that. But that was my, my first introduction to the video game world and culture. So it was, it was a little bit of a surprise to see like, Oh wow! Like not only are these these are like highly skilled artists are are celebrating this game and and talking about the world and everything like that. So. People really like it's not just the game. Like there's you know all the backstories about everything. Like people are invested. Like I mean I sit here and talk to talk to voice actors because it's not just a character or like you guys aren't just delivering lines. You guys are actually like bringing something. To life and there's more to it than just you know pressing wasd on a keyboard to move around like there's backstories like people have conspiracy theories on who each character is friends with yeah. whatever the case may be right. but like you know i you you see it all the time like you said the art like highly skilled artists like there's a lot to this community when it comes to valorant i mean other games have it as well but Valorant is very prominent in a lot of people knowing who these voice actors are and mm -hmm. loving these characters and everything like that. So it's really cool to see. I mean, everyone loves it like when people, the voice actors, get into sharing art or whatever, like <laughs> yeah, sharing yeah. stuff about their character. So yeah, yeah. it's really important uh, for everyone else to, to see that. Yeah, I, I like it. I mean, it's it's fun for sure um, mm -hmm. because it's cool to know because video games are obviously like are viewed one way by some people as like, oh, you're spending too much time playing video game. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. like, old generation stuff like that. But then you see like it's a it's a world building. You know, it's not only that. It's it's people engaging with their creativity and having a community of other other people to to yeah. So it, it's not just one dimensional. It can be, I'm sure there are people who don't play the game that much, but like the world, you know what I mean? And are just into that. Um, yeah, so it's, it's cool. And it's really cool that, yeah, that they're celebrating some of the voice actors. I mean, Carolina, who we spoke of, is awesome. Obviously, very talented, very talented on-camera actor, too. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, all very, very different. Obviously, Steve Bloom, who's like a legend. And the, um, then the best. These, yeah, and then these newer actors, and I'm newer as well too. But I've been doing it for a while. But I think some some of the younger, uh, have just it's they're you know just getting into the, the voice scene. So it's it's cool. It's 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 interesting to see all these different talent, and obviously all over the world too. That's the that's the part that's the coolest. Is I think it's the worldwide. So when I say the fan art, it was the fan art and going, oh wow, this is a game that's played all over the world. Mm -hmm. That was a little wild. Yeah. Yeah, but Valorant does an excellent job of. Oh, I, we're gonna have to restart the meeting oh, yeah, in a no second. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, we'll say this and then we'll restart it. But uh, Valorant does an amazing job when it comes to like casting people to represent a part of a culture, and then people have something to identify with. Like mm -hmm. you say that that person looks like me. They they are from where I'm from and they speak like me and I get to play as them. Like I, you, you just like sometimes when I first got on Valorant, I played characters because of how cool they looked or like what, you know, just, but it also like kind of subtly taught or just 
kind of sn snuck in there of teaching me about culture and different words in different languages. Yeah, yeah. little, little, you know, when they speak in a different language. Yeah. Yeah, you'd be curious to look that up. And yeah. Means. Yeah. And I know ne Neon had a lot of uh, Tagalog or. or yeah. You know, yeah. And yeah, I was like, yeah. And as, same as Astra, who who's from Ghana, mm. um, like there's just so many different things from different cultures in there. Mm -hmm. But like whether you think about it or not, like a lot of people know voice lines. Like you know, you mm -hmm. talk about Chamber. There's those infamous voice lines. But that's there's that for every character, and a lot of them have different words and different languages in there. And so like mm -hmm. teaching, I think that's so important when it comes to gaming because. Uh, a long time ago, gaming have has had bad representation of kind of the culture behind, you know, like racism and everything like that. But I mean, not the fact that it's completely gone, but like it's I think I feel like it's gotten a little bit better when it comes to the representation of different cultures and stuff, which is really nice. It seems to be a, more a consideration in the mm -hmm. entertainment industry. And that's pretty recent. Honestly. Yeah. 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 Okay, I we'll we'll sprinkle some voice lines. We won't make you do a whole bunch in a row, but in between some some topics here, uh, I think we gotta go with the uh, with the uh, if you wanna or you wanna play, let's play. Let's see, we... if I, let's see if I can like from memory from what I've heard. Oh, there he is. You want to play? Let's play. That sounded like EA Sports. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was wonderful. I thought it was really good. Uh, it's I say this every time, and I what I mean every time, every time. But it will never get old to hear a character go into character uh, and do the line. Yeah, it is yeah. so cool. Yeah. Because I I didn't know because I never I I tried to find um, videos of you. But I just I didn't know if like what kind of accent you had, if yeah, you're yeah, totally. if you're gonna be French or not. Even from the start when I tried to find you, because I I looked up chamber voice actor like when you first came out, or when the character <laughs> first came out, and I got a completely different voice actor, like a character or like a voice actor who had did a part called Chamber or something. Oh, Matthew, like. Matthew Morrison. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I saw that too. Because that is so. What's funny is obviously it changed, but when it came out, I was like, "Oh, am I listed or whatever?" Because I wasn't on social media, so I wasn't saying, "Hey, it's me." Yeah. Um. And yeah, I remember. I remember like looking it up one day, and they're like, "Matthew Morrison." I was like, "Oh yeah, he is a voice actor." I wonder why they they mm -hmm. think it's it's him. Anyway, but yeah. And I <laughs> I messaged him. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> <laughs> and I, I it took me a while like I was like man like I can't believe that I'm not gonna get chamber because he's he's a pretty big voice actor he's done overwatch yeah 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 yeah. and he does a dnd thing I think yeah he's in a critical role or something like yeah that. something like that yeah, yeah yeah and I was like man I don't know if I'm ever gonna get him oh no because <laughs> there's there's a couple like it might it might be a very long time if ever if i get steve bloom to right, to do right, this right right and so it it's a little sad when it seems out of reach and yeah you don't give up it'll <laughs> it might happen <laughs> it might i mean the yeah, crazier maybe things when, maybe when you have like every single or like nearly yeah. every single one he'll be the last one he has the right to hold out as being the uh <laughs> he does he definitely <laughs> yeah, does yeah, yeah, yeah. um but what what has it been like for you to have you learned a lot about Valorant? Like, have you tried to seek information out at all? Um, yes and no. I mean, I've I no, I definitely haven't done like a deep dive. Um, yeah, so I I haven't I've watched a little bit of Twitch streams and like YouTube play just to see how it is and stuff like that, but um. Yeah, probably, but but I do I do see the art and stuff like that. I'm like, <laughs> oh, okay, because of that one line, um, when Carolina taught me that they, they ship me, you ship someone with. Oh, yeah. And I was like, I was like, they're like putting me with Viper. Apparently, <laughs> there's like a lot of art. I was gonna like on my Instagram. I was like, I'm trying to share. I'm trying to share like, um, me with another character just for fun, the mm -hmm. art and stuff like that. Like I just shared on my Instagram with Carolina's um, raise. 
um, that one is even hard to find, but it's just like, there's a ton of me and Killjoy and a ton of Chamber and, and, um, and Viper. So mm-hmm. it's funny how the ones that, that go together, basically. So I, I understand that there's like relationship dynamics and stuff like that, but yeah. 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 But as I look over on the screen, it has Chamber and Viper right next to each other on, on my oh, really? list. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's, it's kind of like, uh, I see it on TikTok all the time of Chamber uh-huh. Viper, um, uh-huh. but I, that's 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 really funny that even you see that stuff. Um, yeah, I guess I, I look at the art and I was like, wow, there's a lot of the art of this and this character and this character. And then I started looking now and I, I had a hard time finding certain pairs basically. So that's that's a little. If you want to share it on my Instagram draw some obscure chamber and some other character and i might share it <laughs> yeah we can we, well we can put that out there and yeah. hopefully you can get some some, some cool, cool art yeah yeah um we'll do uh we'll try to find it's always i'm always so nervous to to get off this interview and then realize that I wanted a certain line <laughs> or that people will also in my comments <laughs> tell me after the interview is done and like I'm posting videos, they'll be like, tell them to say this line, like as if we're d- updating it every day. Live, yeah. 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 <laughs> um, uh, I did, I did a bunch with Carolina too. So she's, yeah. Oh yeah. Not not that it's it's fine to repeat them, but just you know. Yeah. You, you got you got some of it covered. <laughs> um. There's there's one after after Chamber gets a kill, he says, "I love this gun." Does he laugh as well? I I had a lot of fun doing the laughs. I, I it was like fun to like. No, uh, it's kind of like a. I love I this. I love this gun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. That, that's it's amazing. such a blur because, like we were saying before, it's like you record it and then you don't see it for months, and you're like, oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, at least I recognize my voice. I like did a game where like I didn't recognize my voice. <laughs> I think they digitally altered it a little bit, and I was like, oh, is that me? Like I don't remember any of these lines, but yeah, it's it's a funny. It's a funny job because you like do all these lines maybe just like once sometimes usually more and then you just find out later what it was. Yeah, I also it's it's hard to like te- like verbally tell you a voice line and especially if it's longer than yeah. Uh, it it's weapon choices. It's so personal. None, uh, none. Yeah. No. No. Uh, yeah. you 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 pick a gun and it tells me who you are. Weapon choice. It's so personal, no? You pick a gun, it tells me who you are. <laughs> wow. That was incredible. <laughs> you just snapped right into that. It's like think... so contrasted from your <laughs> original voice. Yeah. Wow. That might be the craziest. I no, I don't know any other Valorant voice actor who alters their voice that much oh really yeah i I, okay i'm i'm trying to think like there's some that are literally just people's voices not like any diss to Mm. them but they're just yeah 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 Yeah, for sure that makes sense wow like i am (laughs) well thanks i i do want to give you props because you're like it is a performance to to put down uh, like a, a video game, especially a character that is so has a backstory and has depth to it. Your performance is fantastic in in this game, and I I it actually like at the beginning of my podcast journey, I didn't think about it, but now the more that I talk to people, you guys do not get enough credit for a performance like when it comes to like people can like the character and you could probably take it how you want to but when it comes to actual props and like someone telling you that your character is phenomenal and like everything and i know that like riot has great directors and great writing staff but yeah i know you're a part of it 
and I always give props to them, but also you, you did a fantastic job. Thank you. I appreciate it. It means a lot, really. Y yeah, you're welcome. Um, this one has a word that I'm, I'm not going to be able to pronounce, um, but it's E, E H B I E N. Ibian. Yeah. It seems like these strangers want me dead. Ibian. They're not the first. It seems these strangers want me dead. Eh bien, they are not the first. <laughs> You're amazing. That is incredible. Um, I don't. I don't even know what to like. You're the actually mic, the mic. This mic helps a lot too. So this is this is my professional mic that I put in my booth and record when, and it's it's just a great voiceover mic. It sounds that, phenomenal. That, yeah. yeah, it's it helps a lot. Yeah. Does uh, does a lot of the work. Um, where you said you're located on the East Coast? What state do you live in? I'm in Rhode Island. Oh, Rhode Island. Do you like it in Rhode Island? Love it, love it. Yeah, I haven't been here very long, but yeah, love it. Oh, where did you move from? From Los Angeles. I was, uh, I was a Los Angeles guy for for eleven years. How about yourself? I'm in Iowa. Okay. So I'm. In the mid, literally in the middle of Iowa. In the middle of Iowa. Yeah, um, it's not. There's not really a lot. Whole whole life, whole life there. Uh, yeah. I I mean, I grew up in a small town in northwest Iowa, um, mm -hmm. and then all my siblings kind of went to college around here, and so mm -hmm. um, now I live here, and um, all my siblings but one, my oldest brother moved back. Kind of. He's a he's a doctor, so he oh, wow. he's works with my dad, who's also a doctor, and they they oh. live um, close to each other. But yeah, I, I don't know. I I just I wanna I have nephews, so like I kind of want to stay here for a little bit. Um, yeah. But eventually, um, I would love to to move somewhere else, kind of experience something different than Iowa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's it's a good it's a good thing to try things out for sure. What was the reasoning for moving out of Los Angeles? Um, it was just time. We just wanted me and my lady wanted a, just a different um, pace of life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, LA's pretty pretty. Well, it's like slow paced, but still fast paced in a lot mm -hmm. of ways. Yeah. Is it was it like? Did you like? LA or did you begin to dislike it so you moved or did you just want the different change of pace um there are things I liked about LA and I'll definitely miss about LA and things that I won't miss um yeah it's hard to don't want to slander LA in any way or anything like that but um yeah it's it's a tough it's a tough place the the um, for me, people have different things that they like and they don't like about LA. For me, like some people like obviously don't like the industry and the industry pace and Hollywood and all that. And that's kind of what I liked the most about LA is just you have a lot of creatives and actors and people to bounce ideas off of and opportunities and stuff like that. So that that aspect is cool. And you can see a lot of stand up comedy and improv and stuff like that. So that was that was the part I really liked. But it's a very it's a very big crazy city so a lot of times if if like someone's would ask me like oh what do you think of la i'm thinking of moving there and it's just like you should visit first for a little while not just like for a weekend you should try to find a way to go there for a month or two mm -hmm. and see what you think because it's very it can be very overstimulating for people mm -hmm. um and it's i really don't i think especially as times have changed with self-taping and booths and you know all this technology i i, I just don't think it's I think it's beneficial to be in a big market like New York or LA, but I don't think it's the only way. And I think for some people, it just, it's important to um, have a good ecosystem around you, have like good people around you, try to be happy, try not to only be focused on whatever your career is, try to like, you know, live your life too and enjoy life and, and enjoy the people around you, having family, all this stuff is really important. And I think LA is tough because people often move there and, 
you know, have a few friends and then the, the, the joke in LA is that like, you never see your friends if, you know, if like one's on one side, it's so big that you just won't see them for months and months because people don't want to drive over to each other. So, so it's, it can be a really, really tough place. It's an adventure. I think when you're younger, it's like, oh, wee, it's, <laughs> it's an adventure and it's chaotic and stuff like that. But as you get older, you're like, it's a, it's a, it's a really turbulent ecosystem over there. It's, it's tough to find balance. Mm-hmm. I, I just think with age i'm just like i need a little more balance and that and i think it's i don't think it's right for everybody i think it's i think for some people it's great i think for some people it's maybe like absolutely the wrong place for them to grow creatively and and it's good to to support the narrative that you can make your way creatively or whatever you're doing in smaller markets in other places like you can find a way it takes time regardless people mm-hmm. think the going going to la is going to be like this you know, fast, fast track. track. Yeah. Yeah. It happens. It happens. But most people, it's not a fast track. And, and who's to say that, um, another Avenue is not going to be better for someone. Mm-hmm. I've noticed a lot more that, um, I don't know how common it was before, but as, as the times have changed, a lot more people are recording from home. Mm-hmm. Um, when it comes to voice over mm-hmm. anything, just anything, mm-hmm. uh, mm-hmm. self tapes and stuff. So yeah. it, it's definitely, I mean, it's became more prominent to my attention um, recently, uh, but yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, uh, we'll get um, a couple more in here. Let me just check the time. Do you have a, do you have a time that you need to? Uh, no, I'm okay. Okay. I'm okay. Yeah. Um, who is that well-dressed man on the other side? Ah, the other me, of course. Who is that well-dressed man on the other side? Ah, the other me, of course. I feel like I could just compliment you until you got annoyed, because this is just <laughs> this is incredible. I, I just know people are going to are gonna love this. Um, Have you... Have you got the chance? I know you said you spoke with um, Carolina, but have you have you got in touch with any of the other voice actors? Um, I said hi to Gabe just uh, by by messaging. I said hi, and he said hi back. It was very sweet. Um, but that's it. Gabe is uh, fantastic. Yeah, yeah. I was I was just a fan of him. I mean, he's the new Dom LaFontaine. You know the name Dom LaFontaine. Yeah, yeah. The voice over. He's like the new voice over the trailer guy. Yeah, like, it's incredible. Even- and he's really good at it. He's really good at it because I listen to some of them. Like, oh wow, you put something different on that one. It's it's really good at it. I do yeah, want to so. say be- if you're gonna keep going at all, I do want to interject that it's gotten to the point now where my mom knows when it's Gabe's voice on the on right. the TV. So it's yeah. like she's like, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. it's Gabe. Uh, yeah, mom, it's Gabe. So yeah, it's yeah. crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he seemed really nice, and so I I, I reached out to mm-hmm. say hi. Especially since I I don't know why it was sort of like he was the previous agent before mm-hmm. before me, and so I was just like I don't know, just like he's the most recent one. So I was just like I'll, I I can't say hi to everybody, <laughs> you know. So I was just like I'll say hi to him. Um, but that's but that's it. But now that I'm on Instagram, I have a few a few have reached or have been fo- been following me. So it's like oh that's nice. And eventually, mm-hmm. if you know, so. I look yeah. forward to connecting with some of them. Yeah. Um, this is a classic one. Uh, toaster is broken. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get that so, right after. So, so rude to KO. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they need to put in like a KO line that's like just. They probably do have some KO lines that just dismiss Chamber. I feel like everyone wants to dismiss Chamber. <laughs> probably, yeah. He's, he's kind of a little bit of a villain. Is, is it the line just toaster is broken? Yeah. I do not remember how that's said. Oh, he, he, so he just finished shooting him, basically. Yeah. yeah. Toaster is broken. <laughs> Perfect. Um, yeah, I just... There, there is a lot of... Um, there's a lot of, you know, voice lines between people and... Uh, it's always cool when to see the interactions in game between who who doesn't like each other. Cause there's people. I bet a lot of people don't really like Chamber. Um, like you said, uh, was it was it fun to play a character who's just full of himself and just 
Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, it made, I mean, I made it very easy, I think, because I think his default is just being cocky. <laughs> so you could put some like some cocky spin on the voice, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, and it allowed the voice to be really flexible and just sort of like be silly. Um, yeah, because I think, you know, I think it's a sort of like self-conscious cockiness. Mm-hmm. It's sort of, it's self, sort of, I don't know if self-referential is the right word, but just self-aware of his Frenchness and his cockiness and his suaveness and you know, I think I think he's he's slightly trying to irritate a little bit. Um, that's that's sort of my take. Mm-hmm. But I but it's it is cool to you know obviously I don't know more than fans know because they don't really give me a lot of insider information. But they guide me through different things. But obviously we know from um, Fracture, the Fracture trailer, and all that. That's like you know there's he's a complex character. It'll be interesting to see you know what his what his layers are and stuff like that and and how truly villainous he is or if he's there's a gray area or or what it is you know mm-hmm. it'll, be, it'll be interesting to find out um i oh uh please do not mistake my smile i take this all very seriously please do not mistake my smile I take this all very seriously. Oh man. Um uh, I kinda wanna get some with uh some French words in there. Sure. Uh, uh it says Astra, it is a del- or it is delightful to see you. I am at your service. And then I think it's the Mademoiselle. Yes. So it's Astra, I a delight to see you. I'm at your service, Mademoiselle. Yeah. Astra. It is a delight to see you. I am at your service, Mademoiselle. Mm. That's French is is a very interesting language to me i think it sounds so good and and you <laughs> sound can. yeah you sound can, so good it can it can it can it can sound rough too if you go to the right places but yeah <laughs> sure uh where's the where's the right place is that oh i don't know i, I can't <laughs> but, well you just you, you you have all you have so many different accents in in, in is, France, so i i can't really do any but but, it, is, but you yeah is french like where you like wherever you go it's gonna sound different yeah every region has has different accents i mean there's like like in america there's like a standard american you know we both have like a, a standard american accent I'm yeah sure we have like little little things maybe yes yeah like a little but, nuance um, but french definitely has a kind of you know parisian sort of standard french accent um but then you know the south has all kinds of different accents and then all little regions have have particular accents for hmm. sure um and then there's obviously like class differences basically in accents and cultural differences people who have are immigrant families and they bring in their different culture and their the other languages they speak so there's there's quite a few quite a few accents yeah i mean it makes sense i i realized that when i asked the question but no no, no. i mean it's yeah you really don't know until you yeah you experience it so um We'll get like one or two more in here. Um, uh, I really am fantastic. I remember that one. I, yeah, I'll just take a wild. I don't remember how it was said, but I'll just I'll just say it. <laughs> I really am fantastic. <laughs> um. Oh, well, this suit is ruined. I heard that said, oh, I thought I went at one with something. I like vaguely remember that one. Well, this suit is ruined. <laughs> uh, um, oh, do you want to do one with a laugh in it? Uh, 
did you enjoy the show? And then laugh. Of course you did. Did you enjoy the show? <laughs> of course you did. I think that's a that's a beautiful one to end off on. Um, I appreciate you so much for doing this. This was very easily at the top of my list of favorite ones that I've ever done. You you are such a a kind person and um, just such a uh, very talented actor and voice actor. So I, I appreciate you very much for doing this. I appreciate you made it easy and it was a pleasure and. Um... I'm wishing you all the best and hope you get many more fascinating interviews. Yeah. I, I mean, I hope we can speak again soon. And um, yeah, I, I, again, I appreciate it. And I thank you everyone for watching and I will see you guys all next time. Peace.